Good evening and welcome to FBTV News. I'm Andrew Duncan. And I'm Ashley Andriotti. One of the first Boston Marathon bombing victims to testify in the trial of Zokar Sarnev had a message for him Wednesday night. You are a coward, a little boy who couldn't even look me in the eyes. Rebecca Gregory, who lost much of her left leg, posted her open letter to Sarnev on a Facebook page hours after giving her testimony in federal court. By Thursday morning, the letter had drawn more than 18,000 likes and more than 1,000 comments. Boston attorney Joseph D. Steinfeld will be presenting a lecture at Spagnuolo Hall on Tuesday, March 10th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. The lecture will focus on the recent terrorist attacks against cartoonists in the Netherlands and France and the implications for free speech that they represent. Steinfeld has built a career on being a trial lawyer with a focus on First Amendment litigation and teaches courses on it at Boston College Law School as well as the University of New Hampshire School of Law. Tomorrow's forecast shall be sunny with a high temperature of 24 degrees and a low of 5 degrees. Saturday shall be cloudy with a high of 33 degrees and a low of 17 degrees. Sunday, expect a high temperature of 38 degrees and a low temperature of 20 degrees. And for this upcoming week, Monday shall be rainy w with a high temperature of 40 degrees and a low temperature of 17 degrees. Tuesday will be mostly sunny with a high temperature of 42 degrees and a low temperature of 28 degrees. And Wednesday, a high temperature of 44 degrees and a low temperature of 28 degrees. This has been your weekly weather report. I'm Caitlin Lawler. Now let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Caitlin. Congratulations to Dr. Michael Moyman, Associate Professor in, in Franklin Pierce's MBA program for Energy and Sustainability, for being named a Fulbright Scholar for the 2015-2016 <coughs> academic year. The Fulbright Board is a 12-member board chosen by President of the United States who selects outstanding faculty then go overseas to work with foreign governments to establish greater understanding between countries. Dr. Moyman will be traveling to Botswana to focus on the large potential for the, co the country has for producing solar energy. Now let's send it over to James with our weekly sports report. Thanks, Andrew. The men's lacrosse team is off to a fast start and the rest of the nation is beginning to take notice. The Ravens receive votes in the Division II national poll for the first time in program history earlier this week, while also moving up to third in the New England Regional Poll. Franklin Pierce is currently 1-0 on the season after defeating Dominican 16-3 at home over the weekend. Team captain Eddie Noonan scored five goals and tallied another four assists in the victory, tying the program record for points in a single game. The Laxboroughs will be back at Sodexo Field this Saturday to build on their hot start. But lacrosse isn't the only spring team on campus to come flying out of the gate as the baseball team is 6-0 after stomping Mercy 3-0 on the road this weekend. Senior pitcher Brendan O'Rourke threw six shutout innings, striking out eight, and was named Northeast 10 Pitcher of the Week. He has yet to allow a run through two starts this season. The Ravens did not get on the board until the seventh inning when first baseman Matt O'Haran drove in right fielder John Rosino with a sacrifice fly. Franklin Pierce added two more runs in the top of the ninth inning when O'Haran drove Rosino in once again with a single and then eventually crossed home plate himself on a throwing error. But the biggest sports story on campus is definitely the women's hoops team. The Lady Ravens face off against the Delphi in the Northeast 10 semifinals tonight on the road with a berth in the league's championship game on the line. Franklin Pierce split their two meetings with the Panthers this season, losing on the road early in the season, but bouncing back strong with a victory at the Fieldhouse just a few weeks ago. Adolphi is coached by Heather Jacobs, who graduated from Franklin Pierce in 2006 and was teammates with current Ravens head coach Jennifer Leadham for one year in Ringe. The winner of tonight's game will host the Northeast 10 semifinals on Sunday afternoon against the winner of the New Haven AIC game. Tip-off tonight is scheduled for 7 o'clock and can be streamed live and for free at northeast10.tv. For more information on Franklin Pierce Athletics, please log on to athletics.franklinpierce.edu. For FPTV Sports, I'm James B. Terry. Now let's alley-oop it back to Andrew at the desk. Thanks, James. Congratulations are also due to Dr. Josh Sealand, Professor of Physical Therapy. For a third year in a row, Sealand has been selected for the Rose Excellence in Research Award for his research done with colleagues Dr. Ron and Dr. Boyles. A Delta airplane slid off a runway late Thursday morning at New York's LaGuardia Airport, its nose busting through a fence before skidding to a halt mere feet from the frigid East River. 
Delta Flight 1086 briefly circled New York City due to issues with snow and ice before touching down shortly after 11 a.m. Passenger Jared Fallacy said, Almost as soon as it did, those abroad realized something was wrong. The aircraft's wheels seemed to have little to no traction, sliding for about 20 seconds. The United States Justice Department has stated that it will not be charging Darren Wilson in the shooting of Michael Brown. Wilson sparked controversy last year when he fatally shot Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, resulting in large riots both in Ferguson and around the country. The Justice Department has said that they could not find any evidence to refute Wilson's claim that the officer shot Brown out of fear for his own safety, but noted and condemned a widespread trend of racial bias within the Ferguson Police Department. Now let's send it over to Claire with our weekly entertainment report. This week in the entertainment world, the highly anticipated Focus, starring Will Smith and veteran, as a veteran con artist and Margaret Robbie as an accomplice. The film is filled with action-packed moments. The film was given three stars and, was, and I would highly recommend it. In reality television news, Kim Kardashian West has gone platinum blonde after she admits she has the hairiest forehead you could ever imagine. Miley Cyrus's newest Instagram post has her and her boyfriend Patrick Schwarzenegger poking fun at pregnancy rumors. The post is a photoshopped image of the pop star giving, getting an ultrasound and the sonogram showing a pizza baby. And in recent news, Rihanna's birthday was a few days ago, and now, and now photos of her and Leonardo DiCaprio are surfacing. Could this be a new couple to watch in Hollywood? This has been your weekly entertainment report. Now back to the desk. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has recently come under sharp criticism from Republicans and Democrats alike for two separate issues. The first is Clinton's acceptance of funding from foreign governments for her expected bid for the presidency in 2016. The other issue is the controversy surrounding the discovery that Clinton had been using a private computer server run out of her house in Chappaqua, New York, to send emails. Critics have accused her of trying to avoid government monitoring of her communications, which she has criticized in the past. The greatest show on earth will soon be without elephants. Ringling Brothers announced Thursday it will gradually reduce the use of elephants in its shows and all will be retired by 2018. It's the end of the era for an animal that Ringling calls a lifelong symbol of the circus. Elephants have for years played prominently in the circus shows and its advertising. They triumphantly enter the ring, perform a synchronized dance routine. But Ringling Brothers' treatment of this has also come under scrutiny. It has been repeatedly criticized, picketed, and even sued by several animal rights groups, including American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and the Humane Society of the United States. In 2011, the circus was fined $270,000 by the USDA for violations of the Animal Welfare Act. Now, in global news, a recent discovery in Ethiopia is rewriting the history of mankind. After 13 years of digging in the Rift Valley, arche archaeologists have unearthed a jawbone belonging to the Homo genus that is estimated to be roughly 2.8 million years old. Our genus was previously believed to be 2 million years old, but this discovery pushes the origins of humanity back at least 400,000 years. Still in global news, the photographs released by ISIS and stronghold of Raqqa are dated March 2015. The first one shows a large crowd, mostly men, but also among a handful of women and children, all looking up. Three men on top of a building, faces covered in black balakavas, sit on either side of their victim, while a fourth seems to be taking a photo or video. The victim is thrown off the building. In the last photograph, he is seen face down, surrounded by a small crowd of men, most carrying weapons, some with rocks in their hands. The caption reads, stoned to death. The victim was brutally accused because he was accused of being gay. Thanks again for tuning in to FBTV News. If you're interested in writing or appearing on camera, we film every Thursday at 5.15. Tune in next week for more national, local, and global news. I'm Andrew Duncan. And I'm Ashley Andriotti. Have a great night.